Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Experience Kills. I am your host Ben and with me today for this adventure is Richard. Adventure in! Whoop, whoop, whoop. Let's go! What are we adventuring about today, Ben? Well, we're, we're adventuring into the beautiful world of Rare on a quest to Mount Morta in Children of Morta. Brought to us by 11-Bit Studios and Dead Mage. You might remember 11-Bit Studios because they're the guys that developed and published Frostpunk. Uh, but this couldn't really be any more of a different game from that. Um, and this is the, seems to be the one with 11 Bit Studios, who also put out Moonlighter, uh, which is another kind of pixel art, fantasy RPG, action kind of roguelike game. They like to sort of publish these sort of experiences from like smaller developers and, and help them get out there and into the world. And I think they're really, you know, picking really quality titles uh, because Children of Morty is absolutely brilliant. Yes, it's another pixel art game. Yes, it's another roguelite game, but in addition to those somewhat overtrodden um, sort of cliches that we have now got in video games, it has an amazing sort of, at its core, familial relationship. Uh, this very sort of well-written, well-told story about a family coming together to deal with adversity uh, and go on this quest very much together, which I think is actually quite touching. And, and what brings all this together is this narration, which is kind of Bastion-esque in its quality, if you remember the game from Supergiant uh, way back when. Uh, and it's not a, quite as uh, a reactive narration like Bastion's was, but it's very much a classical storytelling narration with this beautifully well-delivered dialogue with this bloke's voice who has just got this this timbre to it which is just absolutely amazing and fits so fitting uh, for the fantasy setting it absolutely is just brilliant it brings the whole game together the sanctuary was a gateway to the mysterious lands around the mountain Margaret pointed to the huge crystal at the center of the den revealing their next task to activate it and open the way to the source of the corruption. And it, and it just tells this narrative that slowly unfolds as you go through various dungeons and yeah, I, I did say roguelike, so you know, partially procedurally generated environments, but everything always looks fantastic. Uh, and at its core as well, there's a really good combat mechanic, which is sort of around the family. So the family, they all have different archetypes. You've got the big sort of sword and shield wielding dad, then you've got the oldest daughter who's got a bow and arrow, etc, uh, etc, et as you go right through the family. And it's really, really well done. And of variety and you can play the game fully in single player or you can play it cooperatively with somebody locally as well if you so wish so it's it's interesting as a outsider looking at this because i'm thinking well, what's so special and i was watching some videos about it and it's it's that family side of it that stood out i think oh right they're yep. all you know they're all related this, this has got kind of um you remember the dungeons and dragons cartoon i know yes. they weren't quite family but it's got that sort of vibe hasn't it where they're all like they need each other, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. So like everybody brings different important elements to it. For example, the the, the matriarch of the family, the grandmother, she's like the old wizened um, mage who's like telling the story of the lore and stuff. And everything is so well animated, even in this pixel style. Right at the beginning of the game, there's this beautiful cutscene that sort of opens up and it's just on the grandmother like, slowly getting herself out of bed you know she's old and you can tell she's old and, and she's this little moment of her putting on her glasses and you're like oh man that's some subtle but really effective um, storytelling that really draws you in to the world uh, and immediately sets the scene for this grand quest and this grand adventure that the whole family has to undertake together uh, and it's different and cool you know really interesting it's somehow more satisfying seeing those touches in pixel art i, I know it's not cool to like pixel art anymore because it's one of those um tropes that, you know like you said it's it's a cliche by now isn't it yeah but i think it still stands up as, a, as an old man who grew up with that sort of art style I think there's so much to say for hand-drawn pixel art that gets that emotion and character out of a few dots on a screen. It's so much more satisfying mm. to see than something that's 3D rendered in 4K. Um, I don't know, it's just got more charm to it. I love it. So it, there's two types of pixel art, isn't there, if you think about it? There's the, the pixel art dictated by the lack of resources and artistic talent yes. at the developer. Mm -hmm. 
and you know at, the le at their level and then there's the type of pixel art which has been chosen specifically by the developer because they know they can do it justice yes and that's what we have with this one we have a great example of pixel art graphics it's absolutely stunning and like you said those subtle animations when they're in this art style just stand out and show off just how talented the artists and the developers are who are working on that game and it and it really pulls you in to the world and um, because the environments are stunning as well there's loads and it's a really unique world Rayo. Right? it's this fantasy world that's just bursting with vibrancy the enemy animations are just as good as the character animations. so there's lots of like globs of blood and gore that come off them as you attack them and and they, they cover the environment uh, and they all come at you and they're all different like gates to the creatures that come at you um, there was a really actually a heartfelt story moment in this I won't spoil it because it's hard not to spoil it but to do with a cub and the cubs mother and their familial connection between them and how it's reflected by the familial connection in the family as well uh, that you're playing as and it's all just very it's very sort of real you can tell that developers have put a lot of heart and soul a lot of personal experiences into this game yeah. to really give you a grounding in this what could have been a very by the numbers roguelike um, but the storytelling here really helps it stand apart from all of its brothers and sisters out there. I mean, while I love, for example, the mechanical purity of Dead Cells, mm. it doesn't give you that character connection that I got within moments of starting Children of Mortar. No, that's true. And yeah, especially for a roguelike sort of title, um, it has that problem, doesn't it? That um, it doesn't necessarily have the narrative arc that you ex would expect from a... A designed adventure so mm. yeah if they've managed to get that sort of character into a roguelike experience then they've really hit high so I, i'll quickly touch on some of the mechanics of the game as well because i've talked a lot about the experiential impressions that it's left on me and that's the kind of person i am that matters but mechanically uh it's got a very clean combat mechanic uh there's sort of a twin stick shooting element to the ranged characters the melee characters are simpler in their attacks and stuff like that there's magic use that combines with different skill upgrades and when you upgrade the, the skills in the home base they actually upgrade for all the different characters so that it makes it so you can experiment with with different characters even as you get further into the game and it doesn't penalize you too much right. for not say having leveled up another character to play mm -hmm. um, which I think is quite nice the way they've worked that out because I was worried about that when you see a, a raft of characters you're like oh I'm gonna have to main this character from the beginning for them to be half decent halfway through the game but it actually does it in a way in which it encourages you to experiment uh, which is pretty cool, cool. Uh, and then you've got you know, the idea of playing it in co-op as well which I didn't get a chance to test myself but I think would work really well in a game like this would only create that much more of a connection when you're playing the you know with actual multiple members of the family yeah. so I think that's a really cool idea as well yeah, sounds good um, yeah yeah I don't know if there's much more to say about it other than there's a, a, a bunch of different platforms to try it on if it sounds interesting to anyone listening so you're playing it on Xbox right I'm playing on Xbox I think it's going to be on PlayStation Switch and it's already on PC. So, yeah, you can get it anywhere you want, it sounds like. I think it'd be a pretty cool game, actually, to play on the go. I could see it working really well on the Switch as well, yeah. uh, as long as the performance holds up. I haven't had a chance to test that. Uh, the, the, you know, beyond just, like, the dungeon crawling, the interface is really well designed. The UI works really well. It's quite minimal and yet makes a lot of sense. You have this home base that kind of upgrades and, and, get, and grows as the quest grows and stuff, and more areas of it open up. Um, you know, it's not a linear game, so you don't have to necessarily play through in a certain order. You unlock multiple dungeons, which you can replay uh, whenever you want to get the resource to help you upgrade and to sort of do quests and stuff like that. So there's loads of little elements going on as well as this connective tissue, which is this incredible narration and this incredible kind of family dynamic, which, which is completely unique uh, as far as I know in games like this. So absolutely loved Children of I Couldn't recommend it enough. Maybe I'll try it out, mate. Add it onto the list. Add it onto the list. Yep, add it onto the list. Uh, so that's been another episode of Experience Kills. I've been your host, Ben, and you can find me at D-I-Y-E on Twitter. Uh, Richard has been with me today, and as always, he has been a great help to me, and you can find him at Colonel Red on Twitter. Uh, almost like a familial connection between the two of us, isn't it? You know, you, you're my questing buddy. Yeah, don't get too close. Don't get too All right. close. All right, keep a distance. I see how it is. 
Uh, and you can find us at Experience Kills on Twitter as well. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, please give us a like and subscribe. And bear in mind, you can listen to the audio versions of these reviews in our podcast feed, which can be found on any good podcasting app. And with that, I say it's time to head off once again. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>